effect here. And if I can just lose this. Um, I started viewing the video and then got thrown in the interrupt. Okay. Okay, just gave that to Jamie. Okay. And I want to do something else here. Welcome. Okay. Uh, I just, first of all, I want to welcome you to the Cove. And that's what this room is. It's our Center for Online and Visual, or Virtual Education. And that's, that's what the name of the room is, but it's really more than just this room. It's uh, a, a, genu a genuine uh, center with a staff. And it, uh, the Center for Online and Virtual Education is a group of people that occupy the first floor of this building. And it would be Jory Hadsell, who is our distance education coordinator. Me, uh, I help Jory out. I'm the um, uh, uh, media specialist, the, uh, the educational media design specialist. The longer the title you have in this building, the less important you are. <laughs> Lots of syllables, not so important. Dean, real important. So that's kind of where I fit in. But uh, uh, we also we work also pretty closely with uh, Alex Adan, who we were talking who we were talking about earlier, who is our um, Media services, uh, media productions, and services supervisor, and he's the guy that schedules this room. Uh, another person that we work with is Jim Hill, who's an AV tech um, who works with us quite a lot. Mitch Sakaichi and Michi uh, uh, Montgomery also work here as AV techs, and all of us together are kind of a team. And we occupy this room, and we help with D2L. We do the broadcast uh, classes together, and we we are help with uh, you know events that go out in here. It's all kind of, it's a very diverse kind of organization that we have. But one of the things that we talk about is D2L. Did you have a question? Name? My name is David Martin. Okay. Uh, but one of the things that we cover in this uh, unit is D2L. And I want to introduce you, before we jump into D2L specifically, I want to show you a website that is very important. And you're going to want to remember this because, as I was saying earlier, you will never walk alone when you're, walking, when you're working with D2L. And we've got all kinds of things to, to help you out. So it's sacccityonline.org slash de. This is a really important website that you're going to want to pay a lot of attention to. And it's, got, it's, it's a little bit dense, and the, but there's a lot of information. It has to be dense because there's so much information here. But um, first thing I want to call you, your attention to is this little tab right here that says for faculty. And uh, I want to come down here to this one, this little tab here, that talks about assistance with D2L. Now, D2L is a pretty complex tool uh, that offers you a lot of different ways to work with it. And because there are so many different ways to work with it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But it doesn't have to be. You can keep it very simple. But when you do run, run into trouble and you start getting ideas, and you will start getting ideas about different ways to use this once you start working with it, this is going to be a place that you can, that you can come to to find out how things are done. Now, uh, to learn about D2L, you come to this uh, Assistance with D2L tab, and you'll notice that we have drop-in assistant times. Um, and you can come to our lab s several hours during the week. This is kind of an important one, on-demand video tutorials. So if you have a specific question about D2L, you can go to this tab and find out how to do some stuff. And we'll look at that in a minute. Some archived workshops. Things like this, where people have gotten together and met and talked about some aspect of online learning. And you can request assistance from uh, the staff using this tab. Okay. So let's just look at this one first since we're here. That tab will take you to our support center. And you can create a little ticket that will let the staff know, and we check it. Uh, several of us, a couple of us, check it several times daily. 
So we'll be right on top of it. This is really the best way to get in touch with us if you ever have a problem, a, que a specific question that is not answered on all the, the website that you've seen there. And you'll see right here where it says open new ticket. And that's the thing that you're going to want to click. Okay. You give your information here, how to get in touch with you, and uh, a description of what your problem is. You'll submit that ticket, and then within moments, it'll be available for one of the staff to have a look at it. Let's go back now. Okay. Uh, as you're working with D2L, you will encounter students who probably don't know much about it. They're new to it. Um, and this site will also give them and you resources to help them learn how to use it and be, be more effective students, online students. And you can see that there is all sorts of advice here. Let's go back to the faculty. Uh, uh, something I want to call your attention to is the, <coughs> excuse me, the Turn It In program. This is something that's a little bit advanced and it's a little bit complicated. You don't want to be worrying about it right away. But as time goes on, if you're teaching a, a course that requires writing, for example, you'll want to use Turnitin to uh, check for plagiarism. So you will, submit a pap you will submit a paper, they'll run it through their database, and give you back a number about how, how things have been, you know, whether or not things have been plagiarized. It can't tell you for certain if something is plagiarized, but it can give you a pretty good sense. Okay. Now, the first thing that you're going to be interested in doing with D2L is, of course, requesting a course. And this takes you to a, a little video that I'm going to go ahead and play for you, if it will play, because uh, it's really an easier way to, s to see it. And I want to remind you, before we get started, that you can, you can access this on your own and look at it 16 times until you get it right and it you know so you don't have to remember it everything that we almost everything that we cover uh, in this little session today you can access through this somewhere through this website but let's have a look at the uh, at the uh, little video here I wonder if I have sound D2L course this is the course that you'll use to actually teach your class online and we'll have a student roster connected to it. The first thing to do is to navigate to this page. This is the Learning and Management System Desire to Learn page located at web.scc.losrios.edu slash LMS. On this page, you'll see a link for new course requests. Click that link. This link takes you to the Los Rios employee self-service page. This is a place where you can manage your D2L requests and do some other things like look at old pay stubs or upgrade your personal information. To log in to the employee self-service page use your employee ID and your unified password. This is the same password you'll use to log into um, email and other uh, Los Rios services and then click the login button. Now that I'm logged in I have some choices. Over here on the left are some payroll and uh, tax and personal information um, functions that I want to ignore. What I really care about is what's over here on the right hand side. These are all the D2L um, options I have. And since I'm a coordinator, I have a couple that you won't see on your menu. The one you really want to know, though, is the D2L official course link. So go ahead and click on that link. This brings up the instructor class requests specific to you. And you'll notice that my ID number is automatically included in this first field. The way this search works is you really only want to put information in one field. So I just leave that number in there and go straight to search. No need to really put in a last name or a first name.
and here it brings up my list of courses by semester. Here are my spring 2009 courses, and here is a fall 09 uh, set of courses. So I'll click any one of the links on this row, since they all go to the same page. I'll click on the fall 09. And here you see a class listed and some headings. So again, it identifies who I am, what term we're in, and then you can see which classes have been officially assigned to me. Now, it's important to note that if you've been assigned a class, but it does not show up on this list, most of the time it's because even though your dean may have told you that you're teaching the class, they haven't officially um, assigned the class to you in the PeopleSoft software that the district uses. So make sure that if you don't see a class on this list that should be there, talk to your division dean about that. This part of the form is pretty easy. Since I'm teaching one class, what I need to do is come over to this checkbox here where it says use D2L, and I'll click a check mark to indicate that I want to use D2L, and you notice a couple other fields popped up. Here is the grouping drop down menu, and let's say I was teaching two online classes of the same subject and catalog number then what I could do is have one site created with two rosters linked to it. To do that I would, for both classes, click Use D2L here and then let's say down here. And then when I click on the grouping, it's like a match matching exercise. I would say Multi 1 for this and also Multi 1 for the next class as well. So they're both linked to Multi 1. That's the way to link multiple rosters to a single D2L course. Since I'm only doing an individual class, I'll just click individual class here. You'll also notice at the bottom of this screen a note about when students will be added to your D2L class, which is generally five days to one week before the class start date, which is this date here. Okay, and that will vary by term. Once I've made my selection and any groupings that I needed to do, I click the Review Request yellow button. Now what's happened here is since I hit Review Request, it's actually assigned that class a D2L course name. So when the class is created in D2L, this is how it'll show up. There's also a text box here where you could enter additional information about the course. It's limited to just a few characters because we don't want to make the names too long. But this could be my Tuesday section or my hybrid section or anything that you need to help identify the course. Once you're satisfied with the name, click on Submit Request. And here's the confirmation screen. Your D2L requests have been saved and should be created tonight. If you're finished with your D2L requests, please sign out of PeopleSoft now. I'm going to click OK. And then sign out. And now I've signed out, and there's an overnight process that will run, and in the morning, my new official D2L class will be there, ready for me to put my content into. This is how you create an official D2L course request. Okay. That was uh, the voice of Jory Hadsel, who's our distance and online learning coordinator. Thanks, Jory. Uh, and we're back here at this page. Now, that was just one of the many videos that we have uh, explaining certain aspects of D2L. And I want to direct you, your attention, to some more of them. We're not going to look at all of them, uh, but... Uh, I can give you a sense of where to get them. So we'll come to Assistance with D2L. Scroll down to On Demand Video Tutorials. Click there. And that takes you to our Sac City Online YouTube page, or YouTube channel. And you can see we have a, quite a number of uh, videos ex explaining a number of specific aspects about working with D2L. And this is a place that you're going to want to go anytime you have a question. Go here first. Uh, if you have a how do I kind of question. 
And if it's not answered there, then approach one of us. But if it, if it is answered here, and you go ahead and approach one of us anyway, uh, we're probably going to direct you to this. You know, so it's probably better just to go here directly. OK. Now, once you've got your D2L account set up, this is the page that you're going to want to go to. And it's uh, at, you can see it's at d2l.losrios.edu. And what you will sign in with, your username you already have, uh, it's your W number, your WID number. And then the password that you will use is the same universal password that you use for getting your mail and things like that. Now I'm going to be signing in with a slightly different name here because I have a couple of accounts. But we're going to go to um, my instructor account, even though I'm not really an instructor. Put in the username, the password, log in. And you come to a page that is called My Home. And this is sort of the lobby of your D2L account. And you'll notice you can put a, post a picture there if you want. You don't have to. But I've chosen a rather uh, austere looking picture that says, Do your homework! I'm going to put fear into my students. Okay? And over here, it lists the courses that I have. Now, you'll notice here, mine says no semester, but yours will be listed by semester. This is a dummy class that I've invented uh, just for the purposes of instruction and experimentation. And I have an interest outside of work, uh, and also in work, um, in screenwriting. And so I decided I was going to teach a screenwriting class, which I don't think they, they actually have here at Sac City College. Maybe they'll let me teach one one day. Okay. So I want to go look at my class, my brand new class. And I click on screenwriting. And this takes me to uh, my course home page. That's different from, my, uh, from my, my home page, my D2L home page. And each course I have is going to have one that looks like this. Now, this, is, now this home page is a generic home page that you will get. I haven't really changed anything. I don't think so yet in there. And so this is pretty much the kind of thing that you'll be looking at. And I want to direct your attention to the top here. We've got what, we, what are called nav bars. And that's this black and I know, sort of maroonish or red uh, bar here. And it has links. Now this link, for example, will take you right back to that page. But we can get you to the D2L help page. We try and make that as abundant as possible so that wherever you are in D2L, you can find help somehow. Okay. Uh, SEC library is, a, is a, an important thing for students. Uh, recently, somebody from the Sac City newspaper came and approached us about trying to get um, more online access to the newspaper. And because we like to think of D2L as a kind of online campus, we thought it would be a good idea to put that there in every class so that if students, so students will feel a little bit more connected to the college. And this is an important one, too. Uh, you stu you're going to want to know that your students have access, that they should know what the, what the code of conduct is. OK, and here are some generic uh, uh, links here that that uh, you might find useful. This, always, this one always appears, takes you right back to this page. A content outline, that's where you're putting in uh, you know, stuff that you want your students to look at. Uh, if you want students to turn in things online, uh, the Dropbox, do they have an essay? You can set that up for them as well. Uh, quizzes they can take on D2L. And the quizzes, you can, you know, they, you can set them for a specific time. And we'll do that in a minute. We'll, look at, we'll, we'll make a little quiz together. And you can see how that works. And uh, if students want to see their grades, they can look at it here. You can look at it there, too. Um, now, you may not want to have all of these links. So you may want to change it. And I'll show you what I've done with my course, with my little screenwriting course. So I'll come over here to Edit Course. 
which is a very important link. Well, actually, be before, before that, let's, let's look at some of the other functions here. This, all of these little boxes here, whether it's this one here or this one here, these are all called widgets. And they have some function within the course. And you can, you can change those, and you can add functions to them. You can take them away. Now this one, this one here at the top, that is instructor-only links. So when your students log in, they won't see that at all. Uh, and it gives you the opportunity to uh, request the courses, uh, modify your home page in some way. You can get help again. This content takes you to the same place that this takes you. Uh, you get a class list. A lot of, we used to have a class list in the nav bar up above, but a lot of instructors didn't want their students to see that, and students didn't want to be able to be contacted. And you can contact students through your class list, and that's why we, we took it down. If you want to put it up there, and it's okay with your students that other students can contact them through an email address, that's fine. Uh, we've got a, uh, uh, well, you can see all of them here. Okay. Now let's just close this up. All of these, all of these widgets have a little have a little box here by which you can minimize them, and they go away. I want to call your attention to this particular widget right here, which allows you to change, to change your role. So you can come down here, and you can look at it as a student if you want. And we'll do that on the next home page. So let's go to the, look at the home page that I created for my screenwriting course. And I clicked on Edit Course. It's a very important link. And I go to Home Pages. Now you see I've, I've got a couple of different choices here. Right up here at the top, it tells me which, is, which one that we're in right now. But I can come down here and look at some other ones. Maybe I've got several that I've made. And I want to use them in different classes or change them throughout the throughout the semester. And so I've got David's screenwrite, screenwriting homepage. Okay, and that, well, let's, let's go back. Go back here. Okay, so I want to make David's screenwriting homepage uh, the one that's active. So I'm going to come over here where it says set, and I'll click on that one. Do I really want to make this one active? Yeah, you bet. Okay. And let's go see what it looks like. So you can see I've done a lot of stuff with it. I think that the home page is a good place to not only inform, but inspire and try and get your students excited. So I've, I've started up at the top with something that the students will see. And if they're into screenwriting, I'm hoping that these images will kind of get them jazzed up and ready to go. Okay. And so I've, you know, this, this top one here, that is perfectly, and that is just, just completely decorative. This one is also completely decorative. It has no other function other than to get the students excited. And it says 80% of success is just showing up, which is an actual Woody Allen quote. But it's, it's kind of appropriate to, this, to my class because I'm designing my class so that uh, attendance every day is going to be an important part of their grade. I've included a little About Me widget that has a link to which you can get some information about me and how to contact me. I've put, I've put this, the, uh, the textbook right here in the class, too. And not only that, I've included links here that'll, that tell the students where they, can, uh, where they can buy it right from the home page. So if they want to go to Amazon, there it is. We'll look a little bit later about how to, how to actually make one of these. Or if they want to get it from the bookstore, they can get it from the bookstore online. And again, it helps them, I think it, helps them, it would help them feel a little bit more connected this way. <coughs> and we can look at the role switch from here. And I'll change my role from, student, uh, from instructor to student. Click on student. Say change role. And you won't notice too much of a difference here, but if I still had the uh, 
the widget that has, um, well, no, you wouldn't see that. But what you've seen, it, it's, it's changed a little bit. Some, some things have gone away, like the editing bars. Let's change it back so you can see it again. My role instructor. Change role. Okay. Now, this bar, for example, went away in the student, in the student view. This is an important little gadget here. This lets me edit uh, any one of these boxes. If I want to change something in, in there, I would, I would click on that. And it would show me what I'm looking at. And I could take things out, add things. For instance, let's say we're looking at this one, and I just got a call from Randy over at the bookstore, and he says, uh, I'm sorry, I can't get that book anymore. And I say, oh, it's okay, Randy. Then I save it. And we'll go back to the course home. Look at that. The only place you can get it now is Amazon. These are the kinds of things that D2L will allow you to do. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the content outline, and we're going to add some content. I want to get rid of that. Okay. Now, there's a couple of terms here that you're going to be using quite a lot as you work with D2L. And the first one is a module. Now a module is kind of like a folder or a category. And anytime you put something into D2L, you're going to be putting it into a module or something that is just like a module. So let's, we're starting with basic content right now. You can see that I've got that uh, My Info uh, link there. And you can link to that directly from the home page. If you clicked on the Info About Me in that widget, it would take you to here and you'd be able to download my resume and a, and a link that will allow you to email me directly. But I want to put in a, something else. So we're going to create a new module, and I'm going to call it Success. This module is going to be about how to succeed, not only in my uh, class, but in life as a screenwriter. Because I'm really a very successful screenwriter, and I just do this because I like it so much. Okay, And then I hit Save. Okay, And then I come back to the content outline. And there it is, success. But there's nothing in it. If you, look at the, if you look at the module just directly above it, you'll see About Me, and then it's got some content. It's got a link in it. This one says success, but there's nothing there. So I'm going to have to add a topic. And topics are what you put into uh, uh, modules. So I already have a, uh, a file that's ready to go in. And so now I'm going to choose the module. I'm going to put it in the success module. And the title is Pyramid of Success. And I'm going to browse for it. And I've got it in my little USB drive. Oh, there it is. Screenwriting Pyramid of Success in PDF form. And that's the one I want. OK. And now I'm going to save it. OK, let's go back to the content outline. And there it is. There's my Pyramid of Success. And let's have a look at it. And it's in a PDF, so I'm, I'm, I'm downloading it. And this, you can do this with a syllabus or any articles that you want, anything that stu you want students to read, forms to fill out, all kinds of stuff like that. Let's open it. OK. And there it is. And I'm, I would tell the students that we're, on, we're working on this, this first level of the pyramid. You've got to show up, like what he says. In the business, you've got, to, you've got to submit work, ask for jobs, take jobs. You've got to write, and you've got to acquire knowledge. Screenwriting format, knowledge about the business, and storytelling structure. Okay. 
And maybe I want to create a widget where I can link to that you know, from the home page so that students will see it there, too. Give them multiple ways of, of looking at it. Okay. So we've just created a new topic and module. Okay. Let's go home, have a look at this. Well, I'm not real happy with the things I've got in the nav bars. So I've created some other nav bar, another nav bar here. And so we've gone back to our very important edit course section, and I'm looking at navigation. Navigation is what controls those three bars at the top there. Okay. Now I've already got David's cool screenwriting nav bar, so I'm going to I'm going to change that, and I change it here at the top. Here at the top, it tells me what nav bars I've got active, and it gives me a list of things that I can change them to. And there's David's cool screenwriting nav bar. And you can see it's changed already. One of the main changes is that I got rid of the I got rid of the drop box. Instead, I have discussions because I'm going to be in my screenwriting class, I'm going to be having students turn in pages of a screen of a screenplay every week. And the discussion board will allow students to see uh, allow all students to see the work. So we'll we'll upload this stuff, then we'll come into class having all read it, and we'll be able to talk to each other about our screenplays. And this is really important, particularly for this kind of class, because you know, when I was taking creative writing classes back in the 70s and the 80s, we had to go and mimeograph or Xerox a bunch of pages. Uh, and it took, you know, as, and when I was a graduate student at, at UC Davis, we had to, you know, go in and spend all kinds of money uh, Xeroxing these things. This is all done electronically. You upload it, a student can see it instantly anytime you upload it. And it's all ready to go. Okay, let's go back to the course home. Now, I've also included some links here. Let me back up. I'm going to change this. I've included some links here that I think might be particularly interesting to uh, students of screenwriting. Where's my role change? Oh, did I leave the role change out of this? Where? 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 Woody. It's under Woody. Oh, okay. Sometimes I can't. I get too used to looking at something. I'm going to change it. A student. Okay, now let's look at some of these links here. Um, it's highly recommended by a good many writers, successful writers, that you listen to music while you're writing. So I've included a music link here. Are you familiar with Pandora? Anybody familiar with Pandora? Uh, Pandora, for those of you that don't know, is a very cool site that allows you to say, I want to hear a certain kind of music. Okay, that, that, that's a Pandora account. That, that This isn't my music. This is a Pandora account that's on somebody else's, uh, uh, somebody else put on this machine. But if this were mine, it would come up and it would be playing uh, movie soundtracks. And I'd be hearing Titanic and Star Trek and all kinds of stuff like that. Students can put in jazz or, you know, something like that. What else have I got here? Uh, screenplays. A, site, a very cool sky, site called Screenplays Online where students can go and they can actually see screenplays from a bazillion different movies, old, new, and they can see how things are done. Movie sites, IMDb. Internet Movie Database. Um, I spend a lot of time on that one. Fandango has all kinds of information about movies that are, that are playing currently. So these are things that are all important to, to students of screenwriters. Um, but maybe there's something else. Maybe there's, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about, uh, you have a social studies class, and you want to talk about hunger in the world. Maybe you want to link to Oxfam. Or um, maybe you're teaching a music class, and you want to link to I don't know, the San Francisco Symphony, or something like that. It's great to put that stuff up here because it helps to inspire as well as inform the students. Okay. Now you look at the, at the discussions uh, um, board, and um, I've got my first, is me in here? Yeah. I've got my first, um, 
discussion is going to be called a beat sheet. And a beat sheet is kind of like what most people call an outline. But it is a listing, scene by scene, of how you go through the movie. So that's going to be the, the first thing that the students are going to want to submit to. Their, their first couple of weeks, they'd be, putting in a, uh, they'd be doing an outline and putting up a beat sheet. And we'd all get together and talk about the structure. You know, how does this movie, how does this movie look? Does it, is it structured right? Do we have the, the three-act structure and all that? So I click on Beat Sheet. Oh, it looks like there's one in there already. Somebody put that in there. Oh, it's not, that's not a really Beat Sheet. It's, it's just a few pages, though. Uh, but if I wanted to do another one, I'd hit Compose. And what I, what I would do is give it a, uh, maybe a title. Just in this subject line, tell what, tell what I'm submitting. Uh, I might in in this um, in this area make a few comments about it. It's like, hi guys, this is this is these are my pages this week. I know they're weak, and I don't know what I want to do with this character, so I've left some stuff out. So, so a few words of expl explanation, and then I'm going to add a file. I'm going to come down here, and I've done my my uh, my pages in some movie writing software like Final Draft or uh, Screenwriter, and I've saved it as a PDF. And I encourage everybody to work in PDF. And I'm going to add the file. So it's kind of like an attachment to an email. Yeah, question? Can you see that you have a discussion board with all of the students? Can you review it if, if you went yeah. that way? Yeah. And you can put up comments. You can ask a question. What do you think about what happened in the news when uh, you know there was this earthquake in Costa Rica today, for example? And talk about the earthquake, and students can chime in and they can respond back and forth to each other's. That's where they could add. Yeah. Link yeah. I'm I'm using this for writing assignments, but it could be it's you know it could be a discussion. It could be, um, hey, this is what I saw this week. This this might be interesting to the class. It could be that kind of thing. You can ask specific questions. You can moderate it. And there's even a record audio uh, button here. Okay. Okay. You can you can put in quizzes, have students take quizzes, and you can make those quizzes available at a, for a specific time. If you want them to take it on one day between the hours of 6 and 10 p.m., that's possible too. And then it goes away after that. Uh, you can put all the quizzes in in advance and then have it set up so that they'll be, you know, they'll, they'll automatically come on at a certain time and go away. You can do it manually. Uh, you can change that. You can add them in. You can, you can arrange the visibility of this however you like. Now, if I were to go back home, oh, wrong home. Okay, I'm back as an instructor. Let's look at quizzes. I've got my, uh, I've got my final exam in there already. You notice we didn't see that. But actually, I don't have, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the, it was in there. I don't think I have any questions in there yet. Yeah. Okay, let's make up a question to go in here. A one question quiz. And I'm going to create a new one. Because there are, the, you know, screenwriting is not something that screenwriting textbooks, they don't come with questions. You know, it's, you got to do it by yourself. So I'm going to do True or false question. Give it one point. And the question is going to be a, a slug line describes location in a script. That is true. I'm going to give that one point. So if a student answers true, they get a point. If they answer false, 
they get none. And in D2L, you always want to uh, save every, you almost always want to save everything. So I'll go save and new. Okay. And that gives me a chance to create a new question here. And I would go ahead and create another question, maybe multiple choice or something like that. And that is going into this quiz. Now, the term quiz is D2L speak for anything that is a test. So in my screenwriting class, I'm going to be giving one test. And it's going to be at the end of the year because you know, the state law wants community colleges to have tests. And so I would create a, a little test to go in there. But maybe you want some more, and you can do that too. You can make a midterm, you can make several quizzes in between, and then you can then what you'll do is you'll connect them to uh, something in the grade book. And this is starting, this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. Okay. But let's look at the grade book here. Now I've gone through and I've set all these these items up. But the cool thing about uh, the grade book is that you'll have a wizard. And that's the first place you want to go when you're starting with, uh, with creating grades, with creating a grade book, is this wizard that tells, you, that tells you what's going on and asks you some questions about how you want this to, to be set up. So you'll decide how many, how many assignments you have during the year, how you're going to be grading that. And as the semester goes along, and you're putting these, these numbers into the grade book, it's grading for you. And at the end of the semester, it knows when you've got all this, this completed. It creates a final grade. And it, even, and it even submits it for you. OK, how are we doing on time? We're almost there. Are there any questions so far? Yes. You can use it as a grade book. Yes, absolutely. And then when you said it submits it, you mean it submits your final grade as a topic? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know there are instructors here that use this only for posting information about the course. There's, they, you know, they, they can use any one of these functions uh, that they want to, and they don't have to use the others. And they can do it as, and they can make it as automatic, or as hands-on as they want it. So my suggestion is, when you're starting out with D2L, uh, unless you're being forced into write, doing a, a hybrid, something that your division wants done as an online course or as a hybrid course, is to use it in conjunction with your face-to-face -face class, and that's what we call web enhanced. So it's an ordinary face-to-face -face class. You're doing all the same stuff in, uh, in the classroom that you would be. But you're giving your students a place to go when they're away from the classroom, when they're away from your office, to check on things, to, you know, to sort of keep on track. And that's, what I, and that's how I designed my, my cool screenwriting course. Because it, I, you know, I think that's a course that requires requires us to get together. Yeah. What happens when we set all this up for this semester and then we have to start over next semester? Ah, I'm I'm glad you asked that. Okay. You can come over here to Edit Course, and you'll see Import, Export, and Copy Components. Okay. And so the way it's set up right now, it says copy components from another org unit. Org unit is D2L speak for class or course. Okay. And that's one way, I, one way I can do it. I can just go in there and say, I'm going to copy from another org unit, but then it'll give me a list of things that I want to. Or I can import components. It's probably the best way to do it. I can't really do it in this class because I, don't, I only have the one class. But what you, can, what you can do is, is you'll say, import components, and then you'll hit the browse. Oh, wait a minute. 
and then it'll give, you know, so let's hit that one. See if I, see if it, maybe it will give me some select offering. No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's say, let's just back up here a little bit. I'm just kind of talking out loud. I don't do this very often because I'm not really an instructor. But let's say I want to copy components from another org unit. So I'll, I'll click that. I'll go to next. And then I'll go here where it says select offering. And it'll show me a list of my classes that I can, that I can select from. And so it'll show me a list of classes even from last semester. And I'll just pull out what I want that way. Yeah, you can do that. You can absolutely do that. Uh, I don't recommend that. Um, things tend to get a little bit, there's always something a little bit different. And things can kind of, it, it seems a little bit, a little bit weird, I guess, is the only, the only word. I've had, you know, we've had uh, instructors sort of copying the whole class over several semesters. And then they wind up with copies of copies and a whole bunch of widgets to choose from that are all the same thing. And then they've got to go through and clean stuff out. So it's better, all you're doing is really, is just clicking on in a little box that says, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want this one. Yeah, I want that one. And pull it over that way. But you don't have, once you create this material, you don't have to recreate it every time. You can bring it in and make adjustments, which is a, you know, a really nice thing. So if there's something that is time sensitive, maybe you, you, you're in some class that deals with what the stock market is doing right now. That's going to be different next semester. That's going to be different tomorrow. It's going to be different next week, let alone next semester or next year. So you'll, you'll wanna, you might want to leave that one out. Is this overwhelming? <laughs> okay. No, I'm just I'm thinking about my course, and you know, I tend to study processes. Yeah. And I always do this, and I just it's the same thing, and usually you're not getting yeah. questions or having an interaction with other people. So okay. I'm wondering how you have that, yeah. you know, the Well, this this is the thing you have to remember about D2L. It seems overwhelming, but you don't have to you choose everything. You know, that home page that I saw, that I showed you at the beginning, the one that you're going to be presented with, you don't have to touch it unless you want to. Okay, so let's, uh, since I mentioned home pages, let's go and create a widget or something. We'll go to edit course. There we go. And home pages. And we're going to look at David's screenwriting homepage. Okay. Now you'll notice that this one, this this homepage was a lot different from the one that we had, and that's because I put in some stuff. Now this is a little schematic that shows all the stuff that's on this homepage. Now maybe I don't. Think maybe I want the, the room, and I don't really think that SCC library is all that necessary. I do, but let's just say that I, you know, I don't right now. I'm just going to remove it from the home page. Do you want to remove it? Yeah, goodbye. It's gone. So when I go back to the home page, it'll be gone. But maybe I want to add one. Okay. And what's a good one here? Contact me. That's kind of. So that's a list of all the ones you've ever created, or that's generically. This is this is a list of the widgets that are available. Whether they've been created by me personally, whether they've been created by, um, so those would only be available to me, or they've been created by our school that are that's specific to. Uh, Sac City or specific to Los Rios. And then there are the, the system widgets that come along, and we'll, we'll look at the list of those, that are available to everybody who has D2L. The D2L, you know, the company gives us. But this, is this list doesn't separate them. Oh, here's one. 
Did I already do that one yet? Yeah? Okay. Well, I'm getting the wrap it up sign. But let's just, oh, let's, let's add this one in. Okay. We want to make sure that the students get a double whammy so they can see it there. And it's right there, it's right there at the bottom, just where I told it to add it. But maybe I don't want it at the bottom. I want to move it up. That's a better place for it. And for some reason on this page, I don't have to save anything. And when I go right to the home page, there it is. Student Code of Conduct. No. Yeah, you can import that. There's there there's really nothing in here that that can't be imported. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm not really sure how this works, but we've had some troubles recently in which we'll go into a court that's you know, some instructors having problem with a particular widget and we'll see that They've copied everything, but we'll see that there are eight different copies of a particular widget, and maybe two of them are working. So that's why we suggest selecting the widgets that you want uh, manually, because then we'll have to go through and we'll have to test each widget and try and remember which one we're tested, and then get rid of the ones that don't work. Um, I've had s I had some trouble recently. We had to uh, with a, a teacher who had. It was, a, it was a totally logical thing that she was doing, and it was just some glitch in D2L that was causing the problem. But um, she would fix something in her current class, her fall, uh, her fall 12 class, but the, the change wouldn't show up there. It would show up in fall 11 class. So we had to go through and like, you know, figure out. It was, it was some glitch in D2L that had to be fixed, but that would have been avoided if things had been... I think that I think that it would have been avoided if things had been brought in a, in a little bit more carefully, is all, instead of just wholesale. Okay, now this may seem a little bit overwhelming, but the good news is you don't have to remember this. This is just this session just tells you what kinds of things are available, and you, you're not expected to walk out of here and be able to do this stuff. And that's why we've got that. Uh, web page that I showed you at the beginning that allows you to um, allows you to contact us. It's the uh, um, saccityonline.org slash DE. It's that course. Or that that page. Let me go to it. Yeah, so don't forget about this one. It's your friend. Okay. And before, you, before we go, there's just a couple more things that I want to point out. This page also has some very helpful stuff, too. And you're going to want to direct your students to it. We've got a student section there that offers them help. As a last resort, when you can't get a hold of me or Jory and your questions aren't being answered online, you can always go to the help desk. And sometimes they'll be able to tell you something. OK, it gives you um, some information here about how to request classes. Uh, News here tells you what's going on with D2L if you need to know. Um, there is a sample class. Is it on here? It's on this page. That I do want to call your attention to before I let you go.
Okay. Over here under News, the D2L sample class. Register for a uh, free sample class. So you can spend, I forget what they say it is, was it half an hour or something like that? Where you can actually go through and take a sample class and you get a sense of what it feels like to work with D2L. This is intended for students, but I highly recommend it for instructors that are coming in before they do anything else. Take that, that D2L sample class and it'll sort of solidify things in your brain. It won't be such an overwhelming morass of, uh, of little details. It gives you a sense of what detail. My experience is very, very limited. Um, when we were on Blackboard, I never saw the inside of a Blackboard class. I was just working on the outside and doing you know, sort of trained monkey work. So um, I cut my teeth on D2L. I, don't really, I can't really compare it with other stuff. Um, what I've heard, though, is that um, there are things that are, that are frankly, that are more uh, user-friendly. And uh, some instructors prefer to use uh, Google Apps and things like that. But that's, that's their choice. This is what we offer you know, through the district. And there are, there, are, you know, there are some privacy issues with Google that you know, D2L is pretty bulletproof with. Mm -hmm. And we, we initiated a course to go on. Yeah. Would our students know that we were doing that? If, if I said, okay, I want to try this and see what happens. Well, if I just pick one of my sections and set something okay. up. I don't recommend doing that exactly with an actual course. Uh, what you can do is go through and request a development course. And that is a dummy course that students will never, ever, ever be able to get into. And you can experiment and do all kinds of stuff. And you remember at the beginning we showed how to re request a course. We were requesting an official course. Uh, it's the same way, almost exactly the same way you can request uh, a development course. It won't give you the list of courses. It just says, hey, you want a development course? And you can call it whatever you want. And it acts and looks exactly like the official course. The different. Yes. Yeah. And then, and what we recommend that the student, through the uh, instructors do, is that they set up everything that they want in that, in, in that development course. And then when they get it all the way, when they get it the way they want, then they roll it over. They pull the stuff over through that, that function of, of import, copy, import, export, and copy that and I showed you. you get to the development courses on that same page? Yes. Yeah, so you'll, you'll sign in exactly the same way. When you come over here to my home, it'll have, you know, it'll, it'll list them. It gives you a list of your official courses and your development courses. 